Love the heels, by the way. Also impressive, though, that they dance in it. Always impressed by that shit. Especially, um, G and Min have, like, crazy heels. Cruel back again with another reaction video on this channel and happy first April. I am not going at you with jokes today. I'm not that type of person to do that normally. Today we have episode 104 of Retro Friday with Miss Ace Touch from 2012. This is voted on by the patrons. Once again, thank you so much for voting for this. If you also want to vote, then uh, you can check out my Patreon link in the description. It's also linked on my website, crudimo.com, which is also linked in the description or in the pinned comment. So you can find the links everywhere. And yeah, there's a lot of polls on there, a lot of other additional content, of course, such as TV shows, live shows, uh, like live stages, K-dramas, and so on. But here we go with Miss Ace Touch. And yeah, I have not heard this, I've not seen this, and it has been a hot minute I've reacted to Miss A, so I'm excited to hopefully get some new sexy music, I, you will see. And this is the screenshot for you guys, uh, or for me personally. But um, for the members, right, because I am not completely done with them. Obviously, I do see Min's face, though. Her face is super unique. She's, by the way, my bias. Um, and then Sui's hair is super cool here. I actually like it a lot. Then Faye has the kind of dark blonde, I would say. And then Jia has, like, black or maybe even purple. I'm not quite sure. But definitely, they're all very distinct. Um, either way, though, I will put this on my second monitor so I can look at that, you know, and uh, just if I need the help, uh, which I don't know the member names and faces by heart, so I should probably need the help. Here we go. Okay, that's kind of trippy. Okay. This was very enormous. Almost everyone voted for this in the poll. Very one-sided. This is dark. Jesus Christ. That was the intro, though. Let's see if the song is like that. Oh, the classical... Mm. Second gen, almost. I think they're like late second, right? They were happy. But the the set is so classical second gen. So that's Gia beginning, I'm pretty sure. Jamin? Is it Min? I think so. It's kind of what I expected from Miss A, and also it's not. It's sensual, so that's kind of the, the aspect of the song I really expected, because most of their songs I have checked out are like that, and that's kind of like their sound they're going for, which I really like, to be honest. But also there's some mysterious vibe to this, this song. It's kind of like daring, frightening, uncomfortable a bit, the sound of the song. Why the roses in a cage? This is very atypical for a K-pop song, I would think, right? The chorus is super subtle. Very vocal focused. She's so pretty, oh my god. I want more solo music. Come on, Min. <laughs> on her last solo song, she answered my comments and shit. That's so cute. This is a chorus, but it's so so subtle. It's barely noticeable. It's a chorus. Like if it wasn't for the kind of kind of repetitive and like very planned out instrumental part here, then I wouldn't even be able to tell if it's the chorus or not. Like the vocal doesn't really increase in volume or intensity in the chorus compared to like the verses, right? It just keeps flowing very well in like like one pretty even river, if you would say. If like if you would call the instrumental and just the instrumental, the whole song, a river, then it's like very even almost the whole time. It's like very little bumps only that like stick out as being different. Love the heels, by the way. Also impressive though that they dance in it. Always impressed by that shit. Especially um, Gia has like, is it Gia and Min? Yeah, Gia and Min have like crazy heels. We don't see... There's not much Faye screen time, I noticed. Hi, Susie. She looks more mature here. A little bit. A little bit. The vocal, man. It was... Was that Faye? I think so, yeah. Her voice is really powerful. That part is so cool of the choreo. It's so, like, little detail, but... That spin of the hip. 
That's so cool. This shot is so trippy. Why do they do that? Like it almost looks like the the room is like falling or something. <laughs> like it's a kind of paper room and it's just kind of falling. But obviously like it's a video and they're dancing, so it's just kind of mind f, you know. There's no climax in the song really. That's interesting. That's a beautiful shot, by the way. I feel like the cinematography overall was really, really pretty for its time, 2012. Like, it looks so good. But, you know, obviously the, the very inferior camera quality and, like, all of the inferior, like, techniques you have in, like, video editing compared to today um, make this look, obviously, less good than it would look in 2022. Like, them shooting this in 2022 here with the same sets, same outfits, everything, but just with better technique, better camera and everything, would look insane. This It's like a really, really beautiful music video. Especially these even, right? They look like roses. Like, I, I didn't talk about this yet, but they have like the, the shape and, and forms of like rose petals. Like if you look at the rose, right? That's, uh, and I mean, obviously it's all about roses in this one. So that is so, so, so pretty, the, the way they did the music video, honestly. Uh, the song is definitely confusing me though because it's very atypical. So I don't know what to think about the song, to be honest. It's like I've never heard something like this, uh, or at least not in a long, long time. I can't remember. That's that's cool though, right? Unique songs always good, but definitely it's a bit um, un like it's a it's a risky approach. I would say like this is the type of approach I would put on a similar level as to. Red Velvet with, what was it, was it Automatic? I don't think it was Automatic, but one of the earlier Red Velvet title tracks was that title track they made because of the ferry like uh, incident and uh, and um, crash, what happened there. Um, so that it was like a song about that and it was like a ballad song for a title track for Red Velvet. And that was to me like a, obviously very, very beautiful choice to do, but also in, in terms of like if we talk strictly business, like, uh, it's a very risky choice to put a, an actual classical ballad as a title track in K-pop because it's not anything that really grabs much attention and honestly, it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> it's probably not. Like, the it's like a insanely high risk and very low reward. It's like literally it doesn't make sense to do that, to be honest. Unless you can afford to do it, I guess, right? Unless you don't... Because I guess Red Velvet is a big free company, big free group, so... They could afford to do that, but if it's like a smaller group, they would do that. They either blow up because it's different and people like their voices, but it's very, very likely, 99.99% that they just are totally overlooked and uh, nobody you know, even listens to that um, or pays much attention. So in a similar vein, I think this was not necessarily a classical ballad, but it was definitely in a similar aspect where it's super risky to do a song like this because it's a very, very, very slow pop ballad. And it's very, like, it's not even a ballad type of song where there's a climax, right? And the climax in ballads is definitely a choice. It is sometimes there, it is sometimes not. This one didn't really have one. Not even like a high note or anything really. Like Fang had some nice vocals for sure, but it's like not even like an actual like belting note or anything like that. So it's to be honest, um, quite surprising that they came out with such a song. But it's also nice. It's actually um you know a nice different song. So I appreciate that. I just need more time to get used to that and listen to the song a few more times to be able to tell you guys you know, what I actually think about it as a song. Can't do that on first impression for, for these types of songs that surprise me that much and where I'm more like more like thinking about the structure than the sound, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's my reaction with Miss Ace Touch. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I definitely missed them. That's I think I want to say that one last thing. I think Miss Ace is a bit overlooked these days. I think they were always overlooked probably, except like their debut and, and shit, you know. In Korea, they probably were not overlooked, but internationally, I feel like they were always overlooked. Uh, especially these days, though. Uh, nobody really talks about them anymore, and I don't really see anybody do reactions to them on YouTube. So honestly, I'm a bit sad to see that. Uh, I feel like they deserve so much more, and I still, to this day, think Bad Girl, Good Girl is an absolute masterpiece, and I also still think that Face Fantasy, which I've reacted to, is, I mean, one of the best K-pop solo songs I've seen. And call, solo songs and music videos, like the combination, I have seen. It's so, so good. And uh, I mean, it's way underrated. So, yeah, that's uh, a bit sad, to be honest. But here's what it is. Thanks so much for watching now and have a nice day. Peace.